Want to know how to build a raised garden bed for free? I'm going to show you how to do it. We got all these pallets for free from a local company. The main concern when you're building something out of pallets for your garden, you want to make sure that it has this HT, which means heat treated. That means that it hasn't been treated with chemicals, it's been treated with heat. That way you're not getting any funky stuff that's leaching into your soil and then into your food. There's several ways you can do this. You can use a skill saw and just cut along the edge right here and cut those nails off. You could also use a sledgehammer and a crowbar, or you can use one of these pallet breaker of parters. <laughs> What is it called? Uh, pallet tools that just pops the boards up for you. We have this because we built an entire goat pen out of pallets about four years ago. So you're just gonna slide this underneath and pop it up and it's like seconds. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of these, this tool right here is definitely worth the investment. I'll be sure to link this in case you want to get yourself one. These middle nails right here, I'm just going to hammer them through to the other side and then pull these out. I didn't want them to fly where I couldn't find them. Alternatively, you could also use some wire snips and just cut them off close to the board. We're gonna try to reuse these nails, and that's a great idea to save even more money if you can manage to get them out without bending them. To keep this project free, if we don't end up using the nails, we're just gonna use some leftover screws from other projects. These garden beds right here are cedar fencing, and they cost us less than $35 each. So it doesn't take a lot of money to build something that's really nice. And even though these aren't gonna last forever, if you get three or four years out use out of them, it's well worth the money. Normally, when you're doing something to save money, you're going to put a lot more time in it, but in the end, it's free or really, really cheap, so, you know, you got to kind of weigh that out what you want to do. No, it's not easy. <laughs> so we got all the middle nails out, and we have a chop saw, so we're going to be chopping these ends off with these other nails, but if you don't have a chop saw or a skill saw, you can also just take these nails out, too. That way we have like a fresh end without a bunch of nail holes in it. <laughs> this isn't my favorite thing to be doing. No worky. It's not working, my love. No work. let Ryan do the rest because he's much quicker at it than I am. So now that we cut all the ends off, you can see that not all of them are even, so we're just going to go through and find the shortest one and then cut all the other ones to match the short piece. This is our shortest board, so we're just going through and making sure that all these other boards are the same. Just marking it with a pencil and then we'll cut them all the same size. So a lot of these boards are really messed up and jankety looking, but that's okay. We're not trying to make the cover of a magazine or you know, Instagram's top 10 gardeners, but um, it will make you a garden bed for free and you can plant whatever you want to in it to grow yourself some food. Most pallets have about nine boards on them but a lot of those are gonna be messed up and cracked. So for this project, we use boards from three different pallets. Another dilemma with some of these pallets is the fact that all the boards aren't the same width. So we will just have to uh, line them up and measure them and do the best that we can with what we have. So now we're gonna lay everything out and figure out what we're gonna do with this. To save a little bit of time, we're not planning on making it a rectangle. It's just gonna be a square so we don't have to cut anything in half. I think we'll just put one skinny one in the middle of all of them, if that would work if we have enough skinny ones. Yeah, we'll just, I'll just eyeball it and then measure and see if they're roughly the same. Dang it! Sick of these splinters. Wear gloves if you do this. I've already had two really bad splinters. <laughs> okay, 
more than 10 and a quarter. And 10 and a half. So these three are 10 and about 10 and a half. This one's about 11 inches. So we'll just have one that's saying, hey, I'm a little bit higher. <laughs> to brace the corners on the inside of the bed, we're gonna use this board, which was holding all the slats on the pallet. We're gonna cut it down into about nine inch pieces. I know there's gonna be some people who say, but it's not free if you use the saw. Well, the saw was a little over $100 and we built all these garden buds with it. So we still save tons of money by buying this and everything else being really cheap or free. Plus it saves our back so we're, because we're not sawing <laughs> the wood by hand. <laughs> so if you're a DIYer, you probably wanna get yourself one because it's only around 110 bucks. So I'll link it down below if you're interested. So I refinished furniture and I have all these screws that are left over. These screws right here will rust if we put them in here. These deck screws are from building these beds, but they're gonna be a little bit too long for this project. So if you're gonna spend any money at all, I would recommend getting the proper length screws that aren't gonna rust. And a box of these are like seven or eight bucks. After a quick trip to Lowe's, we got these uh, one and a quarter deck screws that aren't gonna rust. And it's also been a couple of days. <laughs> we had some rain come through, so we weren't able to finish up the next day. So next thing we're gonna do, we cut these pieces from the, the long side pieces and middle pieces that were holding the pallet together. And then, screwed a couple holes in the bottom for the screws and one on each of the middle and top to hold it in place. You can see here how we use these brackets that we cut to screw all the boards into. So now that we have this ugly duckling finished, she's kind of cute and she'll do the job. So she's a little catty wampus, but aren't we all? Got a, a side here that's Higher on this side, lower on this side. And if you wanted to make it a little bit fancier, we had these cut too. You could put those somewhere like on the outside here, even two or three, one on each side, one in the middle. You can just do whatever you want to make it as pretty as you want to. Or you could put like, put them on the corners like this, like what we did with our other beds. Now we just need to mix up our soil and get it ready to plant in. Instead of watering this with a water hose, we're gonna use this Oya by Grow Oya and fill it up and it will keep these plants in here watered for about a week or so. All I'm gonna do is bury this to where the, just the neck is sticking out and it will water all these plants for me. These are super cool because the plants will sort of uh, be attracted to the water as it seeps out and they'll just take in as much water as they actually need. This also takes away the chance of you overwatering or underwatering your plant. And now we're just gonna cover up the soil with some mulch and we like to use hemp mulch. This right here is one of the most important things you can do for your garden and your soil. And what I've noticed is most people miss this step and wonder why their garden is not doing so well and their soil is kind of lacking. One of the principles of soil health is to keep your soil covered. It's very beneficial. So don't miss this step. If you wanna learn more about growing food, I've written a guide called From Seed to Sustainability and it'll teach you everything you need to know about growing food. And I'll leave a link to that guide in the description along with the Grow Oya and the Hemp Mulch. See you next time and until then, grow your own groceries.